Well, greetings to Panasonic JetFlow fans. I know you're few and far between, but I'm sure this probably has gotten your attention. Because I wasn't aware of, nor had I ever seen, a Panasonic JetFlow machine in a canister form. I've seen the uprights, but not in a canister. So let's go over this guy, but I do have some sad news about it. So this is a MC9520, and it says Jet Flow Max Air Power 240. I have no idea what the 240 is. Maybe it's just more of a, a branding or a model number, but that's what's on there. So let's get the bad news out of the way first. Bottom line is this is going to, well, for my friends across the pond, this is going to end up in the tip. And for people in North America, it means it's going to get recycled because there are just entirely too many things that are actually wrong with too many pieces. And we'll, we'll go over that. So one of the first things I noticed was even though these power buttons work and the motor does spin, the foot switch here doesn't have any effect. So there's a mechanical problem inside uh, inside here somewhere. The cord retract, that one does work. Usually that goes bad, uh, I would imagine, but this works just fine and these buttons work okay. And I want you to also to pay particular attention to the motor wind down. So here is a textbook example of no grease in the motor bearings at all. And because my air conditioning is running, you can't really hear, but it's still winding down. All right, now it's just finished. So that is uh, one long wind down. Uh, it's not the end of the world. I could rebuild the motor, but uh, this machine's probably 35 or 40 years old, I, I would guess. And uh, that's not really where I want to go just yet. So another problem I noticed is that we do have a working hose to a degree, except unfortunately, for the electric. So this canister end right here is just fine. The electric uh, connections appear to still be in, in good shape there. But right here, where you actually go and plug the two prong uh, kind of stereotypical power cord in, one of the contacts is completely shot. So I don't know if I can get that super close or not. There. So I think it's I think it's this one here on the left, but I might have that one wrong. But anyway, um, one of the contacts is just completely gone. And as far as I'm aware of, you can't really um, rebuild this. I know that um, this uh, wand comes out, but this appears to be molded, and I can't easily get into this molding. I mean, this this is a mold mark, so there's no real way to actually fix that. So I can't easily get power to the power nozzle. Now, I already know some of you are going to say, well, just go and drill a hole in the canister somewhere and run a wire. Just like, say, oh, somebody on uh, YouTube by the name of Miko. Hi, Miko. Hope you're enjoying your school, uh, that is vacuum tests, has done on several of his machines. So I, it's good for him, but uh, that's not really where I want to go with, with this particular machine. Although it will work. Uh, let's see in the back. Now this is, this is kind of surprising. We got tools back here, but we don't just have tools. We have a full set of tools. And how often do you see that in a machine that's this old? So that's going to be kind of sad somewhat to toss this because here we go right here. And I'm this is in fine shape. Don't really see any issues with it. Here is this dusting brush. 
I mean soft. See, all it seems like Panasonic dusting brushes are just unbelievably soft. Soft, complete, complete with dirt, but yeah, I mean, really good shape. Not a problem with that one at all. And here you have the floor brush, and it looks like it's got most of the bristles. And these are medium stiff. Bet it would be pretty good, really. Fairly clean. Honestly, they look like they've had just very little use. And then here's an upholstery tool. Now this one's had some use, but it's it's complete. And I, I am somewhat saddened, somewhat disheartened that I've got a hair in there. That uh, these will kind of go away. I don't think they're going to fit on anything else, mainly because of this this detent right in there. So yeah, unfortunately, I just don't think there's there's anything I can I can really do with them. That's just, uh, I mean, that, that's just what's going to happen, unfortunately. But a full set of tools. Uh, here's the aforementioned cord winder, and it works just fine. You have a, got a blower port in here, and I, I pushed it in just a little bit just to see. Uh, it's a little door that's supposed to pop back out here, and the, it went in, but it, it's stuck in. It, it doesn't hurt the machine. It's just that it's it, it's stuck in. It's not. <laughs> it won't pop back out. It's probably just dirty. Uh, let's see. Here is the ratings plate underneath. Let's see if I can get a good focus on that. There you go. For those for those fans who want to see that, I don't know if that's focusing all that well. But there you go. Probably the best I can do at the moment. And I was able to figure out what to do with a bag. So I found out that Ricar uh, bags that actually fit, all right, maybe I should say simplicity. Um, this bag here fits in my simplicity. And now I forget offhand if this was a, an A or A or a B. I think I think this was this is a I think this is an A. Might have that backwards though. But anyway, this fits in my uh, Simplicity. It's an EnviroCare brand, and it uh, fits in the bag holder well enough that I can close the top of the vacuum. And you can probably see that I have replaced the standard foam filter, which I cleaned out and uh, destinkified. So it actually smells and uh, probably works okay. But I went ahead and used some just vent filter material and uh, cut a piece, works just fine in there. And if you know what, if a single ply, if a single layer isn't good enough for you, you can always double it up. I mean, it's, it's real simple, it's real cheap. I just use vent, vent filter material. It's meant to filter air and you can adjust it for whatever you like. So this collar fits well enough that I can close the bag door and I've cleaned all the seals all the way around here. So we'll do a couple of airflow and suction tests before we send it on its last trip. And about the suction tests, there is a limitation. It's got a little vac gauge here and the you know, little orange indicator slides across. Um, it does have a um, airflow uh, and suction bleeder valve. So it literally goes that kind of thing when you try to completely um, seal uh, your hose or, or this particular uh, port right here. So you can't see maximum suction. It's, it's actually not possible to do that. So we'll do the best we can, but it's got one of those like emergency bleeder valves. Don't uh, artificially heat up and blow the motor. I can't blame them for that. But I was surprised that it had that in a machine that's, that's that old. So let's see, what else can we go over? Ah, the power nozzle. power nozzle technically does work but it's got it's got some issues let's see if I've got a decent view here so let me change views and get a little closer so zooming in on the power nozzle of course you always have to get with used vacuums the ubiquitous broken belt. I mean, you just you just have to expect that. Ah ha ha. So, all right, fine. It's easy to get another belt. That's that's not that difficult. 
Here's a belt guard that's actually in pretty good shape. And unlike my new TriStar Twins, I actually have all of the two screws necessary to hold the really wonderful um, aluminum rug plate on there. I mean, it's in suspiciously good shape for something that is this old. I mean, really, look, look at that. That's, that is suspiciously good, good condition. And it's, here's a uh, little rubber squeegee that's in there. And that's in suspiciously good condition too. You obviously have some scratching there, but this, this is in really good shape. Uh, it's got a big dent right there, but you can pound that out. The foam, uh, the weather stripping isn't in that bad a shape. You could probably use it as is. Not perfect, but yeah, what the heck. And here is the power nozzle itself. The on-off switch does work. And the motor does work. Uh, definitely needs some, some help, though. It's mm, sounding like pretty dry bearings in there as well. I might run it for a second, but uh, it gets kind of loud. So all the wheels are there. Uh, nothing's really chewed up in one way or another. The little pigtail is in good shape. And like, uh, like I mentioned earlier, uh, I've tried this. I actually plugged it in the back of a TriStar to give me some power. And um, this works just fine. So no issue, no issue with that. I just wish the hose end was in good shape. So now let me, let's talk about the brush roll. Because this was funny. In fact, I guess I went ahead and decided to go ahead and make this video because what I found was so funny. I just, I had to show you all this because it just it was hilarious. So here's this nice, lovely brush roll that looks very, very similar to what I have in my Recar 8850 and Simplicity Symmetry. The big primary difference is it's longer. So I can't use any of these pieces or this brush roll itself in either one of those two machines because it's, it's far, too, far too long. So when I initially got this, I tried to spin it when I took it out of the, the, no, the power nozzle there. And it didn't really spin very well. So I figured, well, yeah, you know it's going to be caked with hair. I mean, you just know that. And maybe even bearings. This thing has bearings on either end. And if I'm remembering right, um, well, at least in... Um, some of my other machines that have this kind of brush roll it had two in here and then and then one over here, but it's got it's got bearings at least on both ends and I can rebuild those. That's that's not uh, that's just again more labor they don't want to do. But I mean if you wanted to do it, it's not an issue. So popped the little clip off here and took this end cap off of this end and we have some hair. All right, so this is kind of like the normal amount of of hair that you get. I mean, really, this is this is pretty typical. So I'm like, eh, so what? No big deal. And then I pulled this axle out and look what came out. And I, I just, I see it, even though I've done this a few times, I see it again and it's just the funniest thing I've ever seen. I thought this was some kind of a, like maybe felt gasket material and it was crunched down like this. I figured that it could it couldn't possibly be hair, and yeah, it's hair. I mean, you've got you must be kidding me. It's it's, it's just hilarious. So look at this. I mean, how many years does it take to build up a a hot dog tubish level of hair like this? I mean, seriously, that is that is just so funny. And then I figured, wait a minute. How can all of this fit in there? Well, there's some depth in here. So I can put my finger in there. So you've got a couple inches in there, which you can jam all kinds of stuff in there. But that's that's just so funny. So anyway, when I put everything back together again, I was able to determine, and you can see, uh, there you can see one of the bearings in there. Let's see if I get the right lighting. But it has a, uh, a rubber end cap. And it's it's actually pretty easy to rebuild. I, or you can just replace it. So, you know, whatever whatever it is you want to do. So if I go and I put this back together again, the brush roll actually does spin somewhat. Before, it, it, barely, it barely did anything. But now, 
yeah, it, that, that's not too bad. That's not too bad at all. But I can still feel an awful lot of resistance, and I'm sure I probably need to go and do something, do something with those bearings. Because even though it, it was kind of going like this, I mean, that's all it would, that's all it would twist. And now it does this. So I have to rebuild the bearings in there. So uh, I'm, I'm kind of less than, than thrilled with that. And on the power nozzle, I did forget to show you something else. Yeah, right. Where are we? Right, let's see. Right here. So unfortunately, it's got a crack. It goes right along here, and it, and it does go. It does go all the way through. Unfortunately, let's see if I can. There you go. You can see, see it a little better now. I think. So yeah, it's got a crack in the in the body. So uh, all these things added added up, and I've got enough. Unfortunately, like say repairs and. Kirby shine ups and bearing replacements and whatnot to last me probably the next year. So I just really didn't want to dive um, whole hog into a machine um, like this. So sorry if I made you mad uh, saying that this will end up getting recycled, but that's just what I've decided to do. Um, I've let the, the gracious donor Alan O uh, know we had an extensive conversation about it. And uh, that's, that's basically what we decided that was best for this machine. So without further ado, I think I've covered all the problem areas. Let's do uh, some airflow and suction tests as best we can, but I don't think I'm going to actually put this nozzle on the airflow box. It takes a while to set all this stuff up. So I think we'll just do the canister itself, and then we'll do the hose end, and we'll probably call it quits and just kind of guess what the power nozzle would actually do. So let me just show you that the uh, somewhat now hair-free and dust-free brush roll with a little temporary belt on there actually works. I have it rigged up through my Electrolux canister. So one final test run. And my Electrolux needs a uh, bearing repack too. Let's try some airflow tests, and I'm just going to do the lowest speed and the highest speed. So the lowest one says curtains, highest one says rugs with full power. So this is curtains. And it's running about 5.5. It's heading down to about 5.3 amps. And my test voltage is 121 volts. So that's what we got. The 2165. Okay, so we're at 56 and a half canister CFM. Now let's go all the way up to high. Pulling 10.7 amps on high. And we're at, let's call it a hundred. Uh, let's call it a hundred and one CFM. And listen to that wind down. Still going. And it finished. Oh boy, what a wind down. Okay, let's take a look at, let's take a look at the suction. 
well, what I can possibly capture of it anyway. Let's run through the power settings from low to high. There's four of them. And when you get up to the highest one, rugs with full power, you're going to see the vac gauge actually slide across to your left, and you'll hear the little relief valve blow. All right, here's curtains. There's upholstery. There's rugs. Yeah. I'll try it again. So, I know it would exceed 60, but I don't know how much further it would actually go. And yeah, I can go and disable this and uh, probably have it swing over to maybe 70 or something like that. But that's what the original design apparently was for. All right, so let's move on now to some hose tests. So let's see what we can manage to get out of the end of the hose. Now, I turn this thing on to do a pre-test, and this is actually what was still stuck in that hose right here. I mean, <laughs> that's hilarious. I heard katink thump and check the bag and we got a rusty nail and some insulation. So isn't that entertaining? So let's see what happens here. It's always fun doing this upside down. And there's this. And I know here's a little airflow suction relief valve. I'll make sure that that's set properly. Thirty-four twenty-five. that's probably going to be a pretty good result. Thirty-four twenty-five, and at the end of the hose, hey, this isn't bad. So we have 89.4 CFM. Not bad, so like almost 90. So then, if I would have to guess, and you know, it's, it, it's going to be a guess, that this is close to 90 over here. And if we hooked the whole power nozzle up, and like I said, I'm not really going to do this. You might have, right here, you could have something like 70, because typically I see about a 20 CFM drop. Now, this thing could be leaky as all get out, maybe just because of age or because of design, don't know. But the maximum, I would probably say, would be something like 70. And since the brush roll opening is so huge... I mean, that is, that is sizable. I could see that not being that difficult to actually push simply because I mean, the opening is, well, it's Kirby-sized. So if it did have 70, probably wouldn't be that bad to push. And of course, if it had lower than that because just it's a big leaky mess, then, well, it would be probably super easy to push. All right, so thanks for watching this swan song video with the Panasonic JetFlow canister. So never seen one before, and there's probably a good chance that I'll actually never see one again. Well, it's somewhat of a post-mortem to the Panasonic motor. So I've pulled the internals, obviously, and let's take a look at these bearings right here. Now I know there's no way you can really uh, feel this across YouTube, or really even hear it, but I can tell that the bearings definitely are uh, in mighty rough shape. So I haven't had a chance to use the bearing puller in a while, so I figured, oh, why not? Let's see if I can get this bearing off. I'm trying to make it so you can see it. Mm. 
go. Well, there's one. <laughs> hey, look at that. It wants to roll. About round things like to roll. Okay, and there we go. So, it is a... Let's see what we got here. Six... 29 Z. Now let me change the focus. Yeah, it's a 629 Z. Made in Japan. And both sides are metal. So this is certainly well sealed. So we'll pull this open here and take a look at it in a minute. Let's take a look at this other bearing, which is also a 629Z. It says uh, NSK. Japan. Gee, what a surprise. All right, let's pull this guy off here. Let's see if I can use similar settings. In case you were wondering, I've answered this question a few times. Where'd you get the bearing puller? I got it on eBay, where I get everything. So, it's a slow boat from China, literally, because that's where I get it from, is China. And what's weird is, this is, says it's specifically designed to pull bearings. And it was $7, and that includes shipping. looks awkward it feels awkward because I'm trying to do this in such a way that you all can can see this Just normally you wouldn't be able to see this very easily at all Oop, get a little loose here Okay, so we're looking at, change the focus again, yeah, another 629Z, hope you can see that. So now, let's see how much grease is left in it. This is in pretty good shape. This, this really isn't that bad. And in case you've wondered, here are the carbon brushes. And plenty of length left in them. So this is just what typically happens to motors like this over a long period of time. Bearings simply get used up, dried out, so to speak. So let's see if I can get these guys open. And if it takes a long time, I will stop the video and 
figure out a different way. Hmm. I think I'm just going to have to punch a hole in it. It'll come up that way, as I've done before. Let's see how well this goes. Not too bad. <laughs> yeah, look at that. Look at that. Grease? No grease. There's nothing even worth mentioning in there. Now let's see what the other side's like. And of course, since I punched a hole in the in the cover, um, there's no way to to save this. So you would just put new ones in, of course. And these are common. They probably even cross-reference to a new number now. Yep. That is as dry as you can get. That's the definition of dry. That's something. Yep, same thing. Completely, utterly dry. And there's the cap. So there's this, there's like a, a little yellowish goo or light brown goo right here. See, look at that. Yeah, that's not worth even mentioning. Yeah, that's it. So, this is basically pretty much okay. But the bearings, yeah, absolutely need to be rebuilt or replaced. So, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more. But not with this machine. <laughs>